If you notice a social media account regularly posting similar content, spreading rumors, smearing other countries while echoing American rhetoric, you may have been a victim of U.S. cyber warfare. In August 2022, Stanford University released a report titled Unheard Voice, evaluating five years of pro-Western covert influence operations, showing how bot accounts on social media applaud the U.S. government while discrediting countries such as China, Russia, and Iran. The report also reveals that artificial intelligence technology has been used to create profile pictures and more. On Jan 6, 2023, a Twitter account posted a so-called Xinjiang police sub-database, claiming to hold police officers accountable. However, Chinese actors Lao Takwa and Chao Yun Fat were spotted in this so-called database. For Chinese netizens who know these public figures, it is easy to recognize this as disinformation, but internet users from other countries are very likely to get misinformed. In November 2022, US social media giant Meta revealed that they detected a number of phony accounts on Facebook and Instagram, which are run by teams associated with the US military and used to defend US interests overseas. Meanwhile, in December 2022, another investigation uncovered that social media companies including Twitter have been secretly aiding the US Department of Defense with fake accounts to run its online propaganda campaigns and spread disinformation in the Middle East among other regions. Some 52 Twitter accounts were whitelisted to post comments defaming other countries in Arabic, but they were not scrutinized by Twitter's internal audits. These investigative reports have put the US online influence warfare under the spotlight. By damaging other countries through social media, the US has turned public opinion into a secret weapon to wage war and incite revolutions. America is with you. I am with you. Thank you. Thank you. In January 2022, Riots broke out in Kazakhstan, as mobs stormed government buildings. In an interview with Kazakh media, the country's state secretary Erlan Karen pointed out that, the riots were colluded and premeditated by both domestic and foreign forces, who enlisted terrorist groups while waging disinformation wars. In 2021, the National Endowment for Democracy spent millions of dollars in Kazakhstan, which were used to throw so-called peaceful assemblies, promote civic engagement among youth, and support the so-called independent media. In December 2021, shortly before the riots broke out, the U.S. Embassy in Kazakhstan issued an alert to American citizens about the impending upheavals. Was that pure coincidence? Moreover, the U.S. was directly linked to the previous riots in Hong Kong, where the leaders of the violent protests all had strong ties to the United States. Meanwhile, social media was littered with disinformation and hate speech. As Hong Kong tabloid Apple Daily smeared the Hong Kong police, glorified acts of violence, and incited the public, its owner, Lai Chi Ying, was in Washington meeting members of the U.S. national security team, including John Bolton. Uh, I disagree with that. As somebody who has helped plan coup d'etat, yeah. not here, but, you know, other places, uh, it takes a lot of work. Could be engaged in uh, cyber uh, support for uh, those in the streets in Russia. We did some of that during uh, the Arab Spring when I was Secretary of State. I think we could be also attacking a lot of the uh, government institutions. British writer Tom Foudy penned that the U.S. pledges 300 million every year to fund global anti-China media coverage, including spreading negative stories about China's Belt and Road Initiative.